All right, guys. We're gonna use these three brushes today for this entire canvas. Gonna paint a whole set of clouds. So, I'm gonna take these down because we don't need them up here right now. And we're gonna go through the colors we have. We have all these colors on the palette, but I'm probably not gonna use them all. Probably stick with the blue, crimson, black, and white. So just the four colors, maybe a touch of bright red. That's all we're really gonna need. So welcome everyone, welcome. <clears throat> Make sure you share the live, tap the screen, send it to your friends. And we're just gonna start dropping in a little bit of that blue color up along the top, leaving some area for some white, some gorgeous white. Oh, it's gorgeous. Look, already, right? If we want big puffy white clouds, then we need to leave a bunch of big puffy white area, right? So welcome to the impromptu Paint with Josh Live. We've taken our canvas and coated it with Bob Ross liquid white before we start it. And that way it's not too crazy dry, right? You have to have that wet on wet in order to get all the paints to flow. Now, the, can the, the sky's not gonna look like this. We're just gonna let it blend out as it gets down here. Maybe the slightest little bit of color is all we really need. And then we're gonna blend it with the big old two inch brush. So I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna put the canvas down so we can rock and roll with this bad boy just like this. And we're gonna come into our light areas first. So maybe up in here, just crisscross stroking like this, back and forth, blending it out just so lightly. And because we didn't put a lot of paint right here in the center, that area is gonna remain very white. Maybe like that'll be our light source. All right, we're gonna start to pull in from the side. Pulling in, very light pressure as we get in here because I don't want it to continue to grow down. All right, maybe we'll come in here back and forth as we start having more room on this real skinny little canvas, right? You guys ever like painting on these little canvases? I find it hard to find a seam to do on a little canvas like this. So here we're going, it doesn't matter which way you go. You can go this way, you can go backwards, you can go forwards, you can go up, you can go down, you can go here, you can go there. It really doesn't matter. And every so often, if you get a canvas that's real loose like that, you can stick your hand back behind here and really work out where those areas are hitting that wooden beam back there. There we go. I like it to be nice and floppy and wavy. Just like that, look at how it's mixing and mixing and mixing, getting lighter and lighter and lighter down to the bottom. That's all we really need for a very cool little sky. And then we can take it and do whatever we want to do. Mix it up, blend it out, throw some clouds, all sorts of crazy stuff, right? Very neatly, just like that. Any areas that are real thick, if you just give it a little bit more pressure, push on a little bit harder, you can get those areas to really blend out, right? Then they're not so thick anymore. It's the best part about all these oils is they, they just blend, they move, they stretch really nicely. Now let's see what we can do on a canvas like this. Again, we're only using these three brushes. That's all I'm gonna allow myself to use is a one inch brush, a two inch brush, and a fan brush. That's all we're gonna use for the clouds today. So in order to not have to wash the brushes so often, you know what, I'm gonna show you how we wash the brush. You guys wanna see how we wash the brushes? You don't see me beat the devil out of these brushes. Okay, we're gonna go, my, my, my odorless mineral spirits looks like this. It's a whole lot like that. That's the stuff we use. You can use Clean Strip or Jasco, two good brands. It's about halfway down the cup, so that way I can, I can come in and then I can spin my brush inside the cup, retaining all of that drippiness, right? And that way, look, it doesn't drip anymore. So now I can go about my day. Shit, I'll take you guys down here, I'll show you what we do, All right, you ready? Actually, let's do it left-handed, we'll see. I know, it's gonna get crazy. Down into the can, shake it off. Look at all this stuff that came off already. And then into a beater bucket. That's what I call it anyway. An old nasty bucket where we beat the devil out of it. Look at that, look at all the nasty paint thinner down in there. So if you've ever wondered how to clean your oil brushes with the wet on wet technique like Bob does and keep it from spraying all over your house, get yourself a nice little bucket. And remember guys, go to my, my uh, Etsy store. You can support, you can go to my YouTube channel, you can go to my Facebook page. All those links are down there at the bottom. Thank you guys for all the comments, for all the love, for tapping the screen. We're doing some cool stuff. Now that we've dried our brushes off, always get in the habit of drying it off on a paper towel. And that way you don't have any thick, you know, or any wet brush when you're going back up to the top there. Just like that, wicked, wicked. All right, so. <clears throat> why don't we come in? We're going to try to save some of this white area. That's why we didn't put that big thick paint down because I want to try to retain some of that. So we can come in here with our white right on the end of the brush. You need a fair amount when you're painting on white canvas versus a very small amount when you're painting on a black canvas, right? Just like that. I'm going to go bow, knock the camera over, maybe come up here. Sliding it over that white 
Maybe mushing it on here, there, everywhere. Just smushing it, just like that. Get it all out there, get it all nasty, right along the edge of all of that white area that we had. And that way it'll retain its nice white shape. Let me scoot up a little bit for you guys. There we go. Now we're gonna come in with the one inch brush. Boom, come knock the camera over. Start on this side and just start making very small little circles, right? With varying pressure. I'm pushing harder, I'm pushing less. Especially when we get out here to the edge, I'm pushing very lightly, because I don't want that to blend away. That blends away in that blue and then we lose it and it's gone forever, right? Just little circles back and forth, and all of a sudden you got a really cool little cloud out there. All right, we're gonna go back to that fan brush that we had. I'm gonna come in here. Ooh, yeah, we'll use the, the other side. I, I like using one side for the light and one side for the dark. Let's get a little bit of black, a little bit of crimson, a little bit more blue than anything else. All right, just on the end, just like that. Ooh, I like that right there. Double sided brush. Boom, come knock the camera over. Maybe, I don't know, underneath here I can just see there's like a. It's like a flat bottom to that cloud. So again, we're gonna take that one inch brush. We're gonna come up here. Haven't washed a single brush since we started pushing on the clouds. All right, just gonna mush it, mush it in there. Make it softer. Blend it, push it, right? The more and more you play with it, the more you're gonna like it, right? Now we're gonna come back here. I'm gonna grab that white up on the, the brush, just like this. Maybe come down across that that bit of darkness, right? Pushing that area back as we rotate. Maybe drop some of that darker color under here. Do the same thing. Do the brush, you know, use it both ways at a time. Mushing it up though. Go outside the lines. Don't make it just a crazy straight thing. All right? Maybe we throw some of the shadow in there. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter because we're going to take the brush and come in like this. Start on this side so you guys can see me work this way and just start mixing both of those down really pushing harder on the dark so it blends itself away a little bit better, right? I don't want to have those wavy lines. I want to really push hard, turn the brush, rotate, kind of pushing up, really blending it, right? Maybe coming up in there and just like that, kind of flip the brush over. We'll come back over here and drag some of that light color across that shadowy color. That's why a lot of times I like doing the shadows first because then you can go back and play with your highlights just like this. Watch, we're gonna come in, we're gonna grab that same old brush, just try to get it on the one corner so we don't get any dark color. And maybe over here, there's a little bit brighter area or down here, wherever you want. It's literally up to you, right? Just wanna leave differences between the, the light, kind of, you know, we got our blue, then we have our first little set of clouds. Now this more, this set that's a little bit closer, more centered, more focused, a little bit brighter. And come over here and just start to mix it. Mix down, mix down, mix down. The more and more you mix, the cool little things start to happen, right? Very neat, very cool. Well, we had a whole big bunch of dark over here though. Just, I just wanted it nice and nasty, right? And this just proves it doesn't really matter what you do. Because again, you can come back with that same old brush. We haven't washed it yet. Still nice and nasty and gross. Come in here, just mixing it up until it looks how we want it to look. All right, very cool. Again, a cloud is not a designated shape or size or anything. <clears throat> Again, since I'm not going to clean the other brush and waste everyone's time, let's just pick up a different fan brush. Again, still a fan brush. Maybe come over here, save some of that light area. Come down in there. Again, proving it does not matter what you do. You can do this forever and ever and ever. And as long as you keep a little bit of that Difference in color, what we always talk about around Paint with Josh, right? Differences in color! Fantastic, very cool. Now, not everything has to connect either, right? Say we want to come down, let's wash these brushes off. Let's wash them off, same thing, into the cup, into the can, into the beater bucket. Beat the devil out of them until they're nice and clean. Keeps everything nice and contained in your bucket and not flying all around your house, which my wife would get very upset about. And I mean, who really wants to spray paint thinner and, and mineral spirits all over their house, right? That's no one. No one wants to do that. Now, if I was in a big studio like Bob's down at PBS Studios, sure, pfft, blast that stuff everywhere because it's not me cleaning it up, right? Okay, let's come back in. Maybe we'll have like some soft little floaters. I don't know, way off in the distance back here. Just very light, sort of very flat, all sorts. Doesn't matter, really the shape. I mean, you guys have... You've seen, it doesn't matter what you do. Just mix it up in there and leave room for the, the, the white to grow, right? As the white starts, see how I got, 
I had a little bit too much. I didn't dab my brush off. That's the key. Gotta dab the brush. You don't wanna have too much paint thinner out there, that's for sure. So a clean, dry brush, bam, just like that. And you come in here and allow room for that white to grow into itself. Leave those little blue areas. Don't make everything all the same. Maybe we turn the brush around the other way. We start going like this, or now we're going back the same way. Counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise. We're just mixing it up. All Mother Nature does is just sit back there and mix it up. So that's what we're doing. Take our two-inch brush. We should have done it up here too. Nice, soft, flat clouds over to the side. And you can see we're not using so much paint that the clouds want to smear across the entire canvas, right? That would be no good. And you can always go back in any little dark areas that are maybe just a bit too dark. Just push on them a little bit more. They'll blend. They'll blend away. They will blend. Get your little hairs out of there. Get the brush hairs. Josh needs new brushes. These things are falling apart. They look new, but they're falling apart. Okay, we're going to come down. And you can see our sky is progressively getting lighter and lighter and lighter. So I don't want to throw any darker clouds in there. Come back with the more white. Big glob of white out on the end of the brush. And come in and just start dumping it in. Right? And fill up this whole thing. But remember, leave room for this white paint to grow down and touch that white paint. Or this paint to grow down and touch this paint. They want to grow. It's going to want to grow down and start to connect both of them. Right? In any areas that you don't like, you push real hard on and they'll blend out, move and grow here, there, backward circles, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, all over the place. If you guys don't know if you're, if you're brand new to the Paint With Josh channel, I do add birds. I'm going to put them in right now and I'll tell you why we do this and then maybe we'll throw a mountain in if we have enough people that want to see it. Okay, I'm going to take my, my mineral spirits into my dark paint or blue, or crimson, or whatever. All three of them, just mix them up. But you want it to be very runny, okay? So I'm taking my brush. It needs to be very wet. It needs to be very runny and very sharp. Let me see if I can get it to focus. There we go. You can see from the side how I've modified this brush. It's, I've cut off about 70% of the bristles. Or they start to fray, and I snip them off. So now you can come in for very small little handwork, I like using a mall stick or a yard stick. I got this for $2 at Ho uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, Hose or Loam Depot. And uh, yeah, it's, it really allows you, as long as you have a little bit of space in between your canvas and your stick, you can come down and, and act like a pencil, right? And just draw. So these birds that I put into my paintings, let's see, we'll put them over here. They represent something. They're not just birds flying through the sky. They represent myself, my wife, and our little daughter. And I didn't make these birds. I didn't come up with the shape, right? I've, I've seen thousands of paintings with these little bird shapes in there, but I've never known anyone to, you know, kind of associate them with families. And I always try to tell people, and I've seen it the more and more that I see the paintings in all the groups and stuff, that, you know, you guys are starting to put one, pa uh, one bird or five birds or seven birds, depending on the, you know, number of people in your family. So again, let's see, should we, do, should we throw a mountain in? Yellow sun rays. Thank you. It is so sweet. Yeah, it's my family. We go into every single painting that, uh, that you know, I paint. <laughs> They're in every single one. So if you guys want to see a mountain, we can throw a mountain in down here. I just want to know if you want to. Or if you want to just leave it all clouds, that's fine too. Maybe I'd sign it up here if we left it all clouds, just up in the dark area of the sky, right? So you guys let me know. How about a ray of sunshine? Oh, you know what we are missing? We're missing a chemtrail, guys. Chemtrail, contrail, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it a chemtrail. We're going to come in here, just the smallest amount on the knife. You can see what I picked up. It's like teeny, I mean, that's probably even too much. Let's scrape this out and pull it down flat like that. We're going to just a little teeny, teeny amount. See that? Thank you for the, uh, the gifts, the little balloons. I'm just, I just so happen to be looking at the screen. So come in here. Where should our, our contrail be flying from, right? We have to have it in some open area of the sky. And since this is all sky, why don't we put it back here? Like it's kind of popped out of the cloud. Just the smallest bit on the right angle. Just a little, right? You don't need a whole lot right there because it's going to grow when we hit it with our brush. We're going to take our brush. Going to come in here just like that. Boom. Look at how shabby this brush is. It needs a trim. Look at all these hairs hanging off the side of this old guy. And these things last a while though, let me tell you. Okay, we're going to come in here and just straight as we can be, one shot. Bam. All you get. It's a little thick, so let's give it a one more time. Maybe two more times. Bam. 